Good day and welcome to today's webinar, Improve Product Quality with Advanced Defect Detection Tools. Our presenter today is John Stamos, Product Marketing Manager for the Vision Products Business Unit here at Cognex. John has been at Cognex for over seven years with several years' experience in our sales organization, supporting both Vision and ID products. John has a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Wisconsin and an MBA from the University of Chicago, Booth School of Business. Welcome, John. Thanks, Karen. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for taking the time out of your day to uh, sit in on this webinar. As uh, you all know, we're here to today to talk about advanced defect detection. So just uh, to set the table, we'll go over a quick agenda. I want to give a high-level introduction to uh, vision applications, talk about the uh, overview of markets for defect detection, uh, talk about some considerations when we're approaching a defect detection application. We'll talk through some of the tools that we use to solve these applications, Inspect Edge, Flexible Flaw Detect, and Surface Flaw. We'll talk through some application examples. We have a brief summary to talk through what we went over, and then hopefully we have a couple of minutes for QA. So with that, quick high-level introduction to uh, machine vision. What does machine vision do? So before we talk about defect tools, I think it, it helps to categorize the different types of machine vision applications. And for this, we typically use the acronym GG. So the first G stands for guidance. That would be uh, robotic guidance. And uh, it's really in understanding the X, Y, theta position of an object for traditional pick and place applications. Most robotic manufacturers see machine vision as fundamental to the repeatability required to make their application successful. Next in GG we have identify, and this is probably a, um, a uh, quite broad range that um, uh, that we deal with, the broadest of which would be barcode or 2D code reading, for which we have dedicated products, the data man product line. But it can also mean identifying products by human readable characters using our OCR tool, OCR Max, doing pattern detection on a label using PatMax pattern tool, or even using uh, color insights to identify parts on features by uh, by color. Gauging would refer to non-contact gauging. We can calibrate our vision systems from unit pixel information to real-world coordinates. From this, we can provide everything from uh, you know, pre pre precise dimensioning, think of automated metrology and data recording, as well as assuring exact tolerances for part features, diameters, gaps, even uh, inspecting threads. And finally, we have in GG inspect. And this is actually quite a, a broad range of uh, vision inspection applications, and it just so happens to be that defect detection falls into this category. So let's dive further into that. So with inspection, we can be inspecting for a variety of things. Uh, part, complete, part for completeness is the, you know, what's the fill level on a bottling line? Have all the features been applied or assembled to the product? Whether it's a properly printed feature on a consumer electronic device or an assembled component on an automotive part. We can be inspecting for correct location, either the correct orientation or skew. And finally, we can be inspected, in, inspecting for quality. Uh, this can include part defects, inspecting for defects on a part or feature, Surface inspection, this can include surface inspection to ensure that the formation is free and clear of unwanted nicks and scratches and that it's been properly formed. And contaminants, inspecting to ensure that unwanted contaminants have not been introduced during the manufacturing process. As you can see, advanced defect detection is really a subset of these inspection applications. So more specifically, we can use specific tools to inspect features that are not expected or desirable. 
features such as mouse bites along the edge of a part, unwanted discoloration or a blotch on the surface of a part, a dent along the edge or along the surface of a part, scratches on the surface of a part, large dents or bites or bumps. We can also um, inspect for, for defects that apply to the uh, changing of existing features. Things that might be out of tolerance spec, something like the incorrect size of a feature, a stamped hole, for example, perhaps the incorrect placement or movement of a feature, or maybe a missing feature altogether. So who needs defect detection? Tangibly, we work with companies in a variety of industries for defect detection. Many of the applications are found in the automotive industry, for example. The image here shows a gasket, one particular automotive component we've had a lot of success inspecting. Among other things, gasket inspection involves placement on an assembly, for example, on an engine block, or inspecting for tears. Another common area where we inspect for defects is in the food and beverage industry, uh, both for packaging and in some cases for inspecting the food itself. The consumer electronics industry is another example where we've had success, inspecting for things such as surface defects on the casing, uh, verifying that sonically welded parts are within spec, inspecting for logos, etchings, and print. The plastics industry, whether it's blow molding, injection molding, or extrusion, we can inspect for short shot, flash, and burn marks. And uh, finally, another rather broad industry is the printing industry, where we can inspect print integrity both in terms of pattern and in some scenarios in terms of color. So before we talk about some of the tools we use and some of the specific applications, it would probably make sense to explore some of the challenges of defect deten detection because really these are some of the most applic uh, difficult applications in all of machine vision. So first, in most defect applications, fundamentally we're looking for anything, anywhere. This is quite challenging. Rather than looking for a specific feature at a specific location that we can place a tool to look for, oftentimes we're looking for unexpected defects anywhere. Second, oftentimes we need to account for complex features. Whether we're looking to ignore text or logos on a label or on the part itself, or if we need to account for nonlinear variation in lighting, distinguish an, an intricate pattern or account for nonlinear variable edges. And finally, most of you experience process variation. Our tools run in a digital world, ones and zeros. But really, in order to be effective, you want tools that are capable of handling your natural process variation without falsely rejecting good parts or even worse, falsely pa passing defects. So first and foremost, we need to manage these challenges by understanding the application. So by this, we mean to define defects, constrain the problem, and start to understand what anything and anywhere is. If we're inspecting the surface of a part, really what are we looking for? Are we looking for scratches or dents, or both? How marginal are the defects that we're looking for? Could they occur around the entire surface of the part, or do we expect defects to occur at a certain location? We also need to understand the process variation. Is this a blow molding application where, depending on the temperature and humidity, our bottle is going to expand or contract ever so slightly? Do we need to account for this expansion and contraction if we're uh, inspecting for flash or short shot? And I show an example of this later in the presentation. Does the surface color or texture change ever so slightly from one supplier to another? Next, we really want to be able to choose the right system. And by right system, we mean much more than the vision system itself. 
We want to choose optimized optics and lighting for the application. If we're looking for scratches, well then a low angle ring light might work. You also want to choose a system that has the right processing speed so as to handle your throughput. The last thing we want as a vision company is to be the bottleneck in your operation. You also want to choose a system with the appropriate pixel resolution. What's the most marginal defect we're looking for? What is the tolerance that we're trying to achieve? Would a standard 640 by 480 resolution pick up all the features we're looking for? Do we need to go to a five megapixel camera? And finally, you want robust algorithms. Algorithms that are both fast and flexible that in and of themselves can handle the natural process variation that you may encounter on a daily basis or during the life of the inspection. So with that, let's talk about some of these tools. At a high level, let me just describe based on how they're used. Inspect Edge and its subset of tools such as Inspect Edge for Defect and Inspect Edge for Width inspect for features and defects along a line path. Surface flaw detection can inspect for surface imperfections with intensity variation, and we'll get into that. And finally, flex, flexible flaw detect performs edge and area-based inspection of shapes. Now let's talk about each of these tools first, inspect edge. As the image on the right shows, inspect edge is used um, to very precisely find an edge. It differs from a traditional edge finding tool in a few ways. First, it utilizes several overlapping caliper tools to achieve a high level of subpixel precision. Uh, second, because it uses dozens of very short caliper tools, it can easily handle nonlinear edges. So even you know, aside from a defect inspection application, it's a very reliable tool for uh, detecting edges with a high degree of precision. To account for the range of applications that we would want to solve for uh, defect detection, there are several sub-tools for Inspect Edge. Based on what we're looking for, we can use the appropriate inspection tool uh, to specifically call out defects, a defect being a, a defined deviation from the expected line path based on the calipers immediately preceding and immediately following. We can also verify that the width of the edge falls within a specific range. Here in the image, we see two such instances where we fall out of spec, as noted with the red overlay graphics. We can also verify uh, that the positioning falls within our desired location. But suppose we want to inspect edges for the defects I just mentioned, but we want to be liberal with the positioning. We can do this too, and I'll, I'll highlight an application um, for that later in the presentation. So at a high level, the goal of Inspect Edge is to be both robust and flexible depending on the application. There are two things that I mentioned that we want to be able to handle, complex shapes and process variation. In being able to complex, uh, handle complex shapes, here we're showing that how we can follow a complex path um, to perform edge analysis. Second, we want to be able to handle process variation. Uh, this highlights that last comment I made on the previous slide, and we've got you know, an application for it later in the presentation, where we may have a range of valid shapes or paths and locations, and we want to be able to inspect for defects such as excessive width, thin sections, or gaps. Next, we have our surface flaw tool. This is capable of finding defects on features that experience a gradient variation. The gradient variation might be a reality when we have light intensity variation. So the way the tool works is we select uh, an area and choose the types of defects that we're looking for. And as I'll show you, uh, it can also use a masking tool to hi hide complex features. So as you can see from the images below, on the left, we have our golden image, a nice even contrast label. In the middle image, we have a slight gradient created by light intensity variation that the tool is capable of accounting for. And on the image on the right, we've been able to detect the bubbles on the label. 
So keeping our theme, surface flaws capable of handling complex features and process variation. Since the tool looks for defects that take the form of unexpected high contrast areas and edges, we can mask out the features we're expecting in the image, things like text and logos, or maybe just features that we don't care about. You'll notice on the right-hand image, we're looking for defects on the entire label, and as shown by the black overlay graphics, we're ignoring the uh, the edges where we have where we have text where we have text. And by doing this, we're effectively letting the tool know that we're expecting sharp contrasts along those edges, but all other uh, edges or defects are are fair game. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, the tool is capable of handling intensity variation. Now, I'd also like to mention when we think of complexity, it should be noted that the tool also works on color images. It does analysis on the RGB spectrum, and I'll show a few examples to highlight this feature. Next, we have our FlexFlaw detection tool. Uh, with this tool, we may perform edge or area inspection, but with one critical feature we can apply flex to our golden image. So with natural process variation, it might be difficult to simply train a pattern since patterns really look for edges or grayscale values at a particular pixel location. As the lower image shows with the yellow overlay graphics, uh, with the flex feature, the features can flex a few pix pixels in all directions from the trained image. Of course, since this is a defect detection tool, after we apply the flex, we can use another subtool to detect defects. And like the surface flaw tool, as an option, we could ignore features with a mask applied to the image. So if we have a complex feature in the middle of the part that we don't care about, we can ignore this. So with the combination of pixel flex and defect analysis algorithms, we can robustly detect uh, complex features such as the logo on the guitar pick uh, in the top image. Now it's worth mentioning that this tool not only works on our grayscale cameras but also our color images. So like Surface Flaw, it's capable of doing defect uh, analysis on grayscale and on the RGB color spectrum. The images at the bottom show the process variation that we might see in a pad printing application. So if we're doing strict pattern recognition, our score could be compromised on the left image because the deviation in the location of the circle. So this makes look for uh, this makes looking for legitimate defects pretty challenging with the standard pattern tool no matter how powerful or sophisticated uh, the pattern tool is. The image on the right uh, shows how flex is applied so as to not compromise itself in this scenario of uh, expected process variation. So now let's walk through some tangible examples where these tools are used for defect detection. The first application is in the medical device industry. It's a very common application where we're inspecting a rubber valve to detect tears and detect holes. This is a pretty challenging application for a few reasons. First, because of the surface texture, and the variation in the surface texture, there's not, there, there is a lot of background noise. Um, this would make a traditional blob extraction tool challenging to use with some potentially suspect results. This is an example where as much as we'd love to rely on uh, perfect lighting, um, it's tough to give us a, a clear image in some scenarios. And um, there, you know, that's the case in a lot of applications. So you'll even notice on the lower image, we've got some slight dark streaks on, on the um, uh, top of the, of the valve that we want to ignore. Today we're able to solve this with surface flaw. Specifically, we've applied a few surface flaw tools with annulus regions to account for the different sections of the valve. So as you can see from the images, we're able to detect the various defects. The image on the left shows our ability to detect a small tear. On the middle image, we're detecting a small tear as well as some flash. And on the right, we're able to detect a tear along the surface. Uh, the next example is from the automotive industry where we have an injection molded gas cap. 
The goal here is to detect flash and short shot. We do this by taking a silhouette of the gas cap and inspecting around the edges. In the bottom images, you'll notice on the left we have a good part, and on the right we've properly detected the flash along the right side of the cap. The challenge with this part, like most plastics, is the natural process variation that we experience due to temperature and humidity levels. So we need a little more than a standard pattern tool. Uh, traditionally, we might be able to solve this by applying several histogram tools along the edge to detect if there's excess or not enough material. Of course, this, this is cumbersome and we need to manually account for this process variation. This is where Flex helps. We're able to apply a single flex tool and set the flex threshold. So the top image shows how the edge, it's a perfectly valid edge, can deviate from the trained image. Without flex, we might see the edge as misplaced and run the risk of falsely rejecting this part. Flex intuitively accounts for this variation, as you can see from the, uh, from the bottom image. Now let's take a look at flexible flaw detection on a more complex feature, uh, that of a pr printed label. So we want to train our golden image and verify the integrity of the print and make sure that all of the individual logos maintain their quality. In the top image they do, in the bottom image one of the uh, logos is compromised. Like many print applications, such as pad printing or multi-print head applications, the printing of features might deviate slightly from print to print. Between the complexity of the features and the natural variation that we'd see from part to part, it would be awfully difficult to rely on a pattern tool for the entire label. Now we may be able to apply several pattern tools over the various logos, but this can be cumbersome and certainly time consuming. So as I alluded to a moment ago, we can use a single uh, flex flaw tool run over the entire label. The image on the right shows one of the logos uh, with one of the overlay graphics options similar to the um, to the one that I used when we introduced the tool showing the edge displacement, displacement of the trained image. So as you can see from the logos pattern uh, it's high quality we're not missing any features, we don't have defects, but the overall placement of the logo itself has deviated slightly a few pixels, and we're able to compensate for that with the FlexFlaw tool. Now let's uh, switch gears a bit um, and take a look at this gasket application on an electronic box. Uh, the goal of this application is twofold. First, we want to confirm the gasket path to ensure proper sealing. But we also want to verify the integrity of the gasket by detecting gaps and ensuring that the width falls within spec. Now, as you can see, this is a very complex shape. Uh, traditionally, it might require several caliper tools, and the edges around the corners, which are curved, would be pretty challenging to shape. Uh, not to mention, it's a reflective surface, uh, creating nonlinear lighting, and on top of that, from our angle, the wall on the inside of the gasket uh, shows two more edges, and we don't want to mistake that feature for the gasket. So for this application, we're using one of the Inspect Edge tools, Inspect Edge Width. Uh, you can see from the zoomed-in area on the right, we're able to detect the defect. But also take a look at the path immediately below. We solved this application with a single bead path tool, and in a matter of minutes, we're able to define the desired bead path. And uh, I'll add, because the tool uses the interlapping caliper tools that I had mentioned, we're able to get a high degree of precision for width measurement and uh, defect analysis. This next application is a pretty interesting use of a color vision system. Uh, here we're inspecting a blow molded container for slight burn marks. Uh, burn marks can occur when there is burnt resin on the tool face. The problem continues to get worse, and of course, if it's not detected early on, it could lead to a lot of scrap. So we want to be able to detect the slightest discoloration to take care of the problem, in this case, open the tooling and purge the head. Besides the discoloration being faint, we want to be able to ignore surface noise that comes with raised text and logos. 
for this reason, using a blob tool as a solution might be suspect. So to solve this, we've used surface flaw on a color camera. Now we could potentially do this with a grayscale camera, but you'll notice the color uh, really pops um, on this on this color image. And as I'll highlight in the next application, um, uh, with varied backgrounds and different colors, lighting could become a challenge. So when when we first introduced the surface flaw tool, I showed the tool running on an image similar to the one you see on the on the right, and it was looking for common defects such as bubbles and scratches. As you saw in the previous example, surface flaw can work on a color image. Of course, as some of you have experience, um, some of you have experience with machine vision, might be thinking, well, by using a particular color light, I could pick out discoloration. Uh, this could probably also be achieved with choosing the right filter. And certainly those are valid arguments, but it, it's somewhat limited. Uh, surface flaw analyzes high degrees of contrast on each color channel. So you don't need to tell the tool that the background is green or blue or red and that the defect is a certain color. The tool itself will detect when there is significantly more or less of a particular color. Also, because the color intensity is similar between the background information and the discoloration itself uh, for both of these labels without the optimal lighting, the two colors could uh, blend together. So to show the power of this tool, I have a short video that cycles through uh, some of these labels. Now you'll notice there are varying backgrounds. You can see light intensity variation. Here we're seeing slight discoloration in the blue, slight discoloration in the green. Um, but uh, and you'll see that it, you'll notice it's not falsely rejecting labels that don't have a defect but have light intensity variation. And I think on the last image we show a, a red label with a very slight uh, orange discoloration. So moving along, here we have another automotive application, specifically filter paper. Uh, there's a naturally occurring surface texture, and we want to look for tears and damage to the paper before it's formed and assembled on the housing. Uh, we want to ignore the naturally occurring surface texture and find other major defects, and this is possible with some low angle lighting and surface, surface flaw applied to the um, field of view. Next, we have an application that we might find in the consumer products industry in which we're detecting several defects on a paper cup. Um, now, the goal is to inspect defects along the wall and bottom of the cup, and we want to do this with a single camera. In particular, we want to detect holes, burn marks, and contaminants along the surface as well as to confirm that the lip of the cup has been correctly formed. Of course, most applications don't use one defect inspection tool, so uh, here we're using a few. Along the sides of the wall and on the bottom, we're using surface flaw. On the top image, you see the tool detecting two small defects. We're also using inspect edge to detect if the lip is correctly formed. One of the inspection regions for inspect edge is to set the tool to an annulus region and we're able to verify whether the edge maintains a certain radius. And as you can see from the edge on the bottom image, we've detected a defective lip. Here's another automotive example where we're looking to ensure that the appropriate features have been assembled uh, in the right location to this automotive keypad. Uh, now, we could do this with several pattern tools, but FlexFlaw makes it easy by allowing us to apply a single FlexFlaw tool detecting all edges. And as you can see, uh, FlexFlaw does this by, um, solves this application by detecting the incorrect logo, uh, the lock logo on the right hand image. I have a few more examples to, uh, to show you. Um, this is one in the solar industry uh, where we're inspecting the edge of a solar wafer for cracks and, and defects. As you'll note from the zoomed image on the bottom, we're able to detect that there's a chip along the edge. Now, within the tool, we can define defects by their depth, total area, and total width, so it's easy to 
hone in on what our uh, true tolerances are. When I first introduced in the Inspect Edge tool I mentioned as an option, we can train a bead path to account for variable position. And I actually had uh, these two images. This is uh, an, an example of that. Uh, in particular, it's a flexible rubber gasket or a large O-ring. Post-forming, we want to inspect on the fly that the gasket is fully formed and that its width is within spec. But because it's flexible, the shape can vary, and this is, this is the challenge. So with our Inspect Edge Train Bead Path tool, we can account for the variation in the location and the path um, to still find the edges and then inspect the part. So that concludes the, um, the examples, the application examples. Uh, I hope walking through the applications has given you a good idea of some of the sorts of defects that we can solve um, and how we can solve them despite their challenges. So with that, I'd like to take the opportunity to summarize uh, what, uh, what we should uh, consider when approaching defect detection applications. So first, manage the application. Remember, many defect detection applications are challenging because you're looking for anything anywhere. In particular, you want to understand what anything is and what it looks like. Also, as you've seen with some of the examples I've shared, and I'm sure you see it in your own production, you'll want to understand the process variation. Are there vision inspection applications where you're not exposed to these process variations? Sure. But in many applications, the devil's in the details, and you may need to account for these. Next, you'll want to choose the right system. In most cases, before you even lay down tools, you want to optimize the lighting and the optics. What lighting should we use to highlight the features we're looking for? What lighting gives us the most consistency? When you're Imaging the application and understanding the defects you're looking for, you'll want to consider whether a color imager is optimal for the application, and depending on the size of the defects uh, you're looking for in the field of view required, you'll need to hone in on the vision system that provides enough pixel resolution. Once the image properties are understood, you want to choose the right vision hardware. You'll need a system with processing capability so as to not be the bottleneck in the, uh, in the operation. And finally, as we spent most of our time discussing this last half hour, you'll want powerful, fast, and flexible algorithms to help you efficiently account for your uh, particular challenges, process variation, and ultimately to solve your application. Great. Thank you very much, John. That was a great presentation. Uh, we do have some questions that came in. Um, the first question that came in is, are these tools available on all InSight systems? Good question. Uh, not quite. They're uh, part of our advanced tool set, and those can be found on all PatMax-enabled models. Okay, great. Next question is, for the surface flaw tool, how does it know which features are defects and which are natural variation? Do we have to account for different colors on color images? Good question. So uh, we, so when we set up the tool um, to be able to understand what's a defect and what's natural variation, we could input the um, uh, different types of defects that we want to look for. If it's an edge-based defect, if it's a dark spot, a light spot, or potentially both, the size of the defect we're looking for, and the, contra uh, the contrast variation that would constitute uh, a defect. Now, as far as color, all that's done under the hood. Uh, the tool applies those parameters to each of the color channels, so we don't need a PhD in color science. Uh, if there's a fundamentally different color, even if it looks to blend in like a purple on a blue, uh, the tool should be able to flag it. Great. Thank you. And for our last question before we wrap up today, um, it is, I have an application that I'd like to review. I'm not sure if it would be for flex flaw or surface flaw. What are the next steps? Uh, so I, I'd, inc I'd encourage you to contact one of our sales engineers. Um, if, you, if you don't have their contact information, we've got a, a number on our website which will call into our uh, inside sales group who can um, get
get you in touch with the appropriate person. Uh, the number for that's 1-844-GET-CGNX. Um, and then it, as far as, you know, wondering which tool would work for a specific application, I wouldn't worry about that. Our sales engineers will review the application. They'll likely coordinate an evaluation with one of our applications engineers or an appropriate partner. Um, they'll be able to evaluate your application for feasibility um, with the optimized system, the lighting, the tools used, and uh, get you in the right direction. Very good. Thanks again for your time, John. We hope you found today's webinar to be helpful and informative, and we look forward to seeing you at the next TalkBacks Online presentation. Thanks for attending, and have a great day.